Okay, today is going to be talking about phase three of the trifold. And on phase three, we go into the lymphatic and parasite. For time, we will cover more on lymphatic than we will on parasite. And afterwards, I can ask to see if we want to do a whole um review on parasite before we go on to phase four. So today I'm going to give everybody a prompt and my prompts normally go from the mental and emotional way in which that illness can bring about in our body. And so today's prompt is today I created a space and time to center or ground or to center and become enlightened. To become enlightened means that we wake up our intuitive self, that we wake up that within us that seeks out what we're supposed to be doing here on earth, not what others want us to do, but what we need to do. So today I'm going to read the first one is going to be from Louise Hay and the limp for problems a warning that the mind needs to be recentered on the essentials of life love and joy and the affirmation is i am now totally centered in love and joy of being alive the flow with life peace of mind is mine and from another reading that i have the lymphatic vessel represents breaking the laws of love and then the lymphatic system is lack of enthusiasm um, unable to feel accepted this is a huge one for a lot of people unable to feel accepted when we can start seeing in our new mindset that we are accepted no matter where we go, then our life starts to change. And of course, the things we need to change is our negative thoughts against yourself. So it goes back to lack of enthusiasm, unable to feel accepted, and negative thoughts against ourself. So that's the um, patterns that we get stuck in when the lymphatic system becomes congested. Any questions on that today? Let's go ahead and take two different um, thoughts on filling in the blank. Today, I created a space and time to center or ground. Let's see, pretty much Darcy. I'm trying to see who's on live. <laughs> Okay. How would you fill in that prompt? Uh, being, being centered or grounded, um, creates, a creates, let's change a die for you. Being centered or grounded <laughs> creates a place of peace. And allows me to be enlightened. Okay. And how, where would you do that at? Like, what would be your place? Would you take five seconds after lunch? Like, what's the time? Let's go with time stamped. When, what time of the day would you take? I'm going to be honest with y'all. At one time, mine was when I would go to the bathroom. That was when I worked, you know, a job where it was very, very busy. And when I'd get in that stall, it was my time. And I literally would take some deep breaths. So I hate to say this, but my place has always been on the toilet. 
it's 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 gotten in a different place now in addition to so where could it take place dorsey um what i was thinking is when i go for my walk my Earth. daily walk yes so you see what we need is we need it to be time stamped so that's why we put the space and the time because if we don't define where's the space and the time we will not start the habit um <laughs> corinne we're going to take two and then i'll give the presentation so the prompting of i you can just fill in the bank i create a space and time to center or ground and you know what does that look like for you i was just typing it in and i take 10 to 15 minutes in the morning right when i get up you know for prayer for gratitude um and for you know grounding me to today not yesterday not tomorrow but today good job um so one of the things is is we have to become intentional so sarah said i know so many moms can relate with that it's our only time alone sometimes and i advocate that moms learn to take a bath alone or hand off the child if that's a, a ideal situation it's not always an ideal situation but to be able to have that time so i really work with people in creating that time and marissa said i used to do the same thing in the corporate world yeah that's when i was in the corporate world but for me now it's first thing in the morning on a yoga mat and then lisa put i always want to do it but rarely do i do get it in other ways and then Tiffany, I lock myself in the bath in the bedroom. I lock my bedroom door and have my bath night three to four times a week. I used to do that. I'd lock my bedroom door. I'd lock the bathroom door, and I had a sign: "Mom in bathtub, do not disturb." <laughs> you know, it it really sounds. And Lisa, yes, I, until I created that time and space. Um, I, a lot of things inside of me in my parasympathetic nervous system did not change and I stayed. So my weakness or you know, illnesses go back to, I need to figure out how to put this on, uh, do not disturb. Let's see, maybe right there. And the reason in which my lymphatic system was my weakness. So I would, catch the bronchitis, I had the cold. If I would go back and look at my past, the lymphatic system is very dear to me. And so I do a lot of things to work on the lymphatic system. So when this came up, this was like, I call it my expertise area because I walk the journey. All right, so let me share my screen and we will Okay, so what I'm going to do is I will be showing you the PowerPoint presentation side through Canva and through Canva, um, I'm able to see my notes and my presenters. So I have two screens, but I'm only sharing the slideshow for your viewing. All right, so decongest the lymphatic system. What is the lymphatic system? Here we go, the tonsils, the thymus, the lip nodes, the lip vessels. So the vessels is where the blood flows. The spleen, which is in our stomach region on the left side of our body. One of the ones you may not have heard of is the Peyer's patch in the small intestines. They are a bunch of lip nodes. And then the appendix and guess what? Bone marrow. So when I look at a CBC on blood work, I am looking at your lymphatic system. So the lymphatic system is a vital part of our immune system. So remember guys, when we refer to the lymphatic system, we are always referring to your immune system. You cannot take these two apart. This is it. And that includes the thymus, which is at the center of our sternum, right underneath the sternum on top of the breastbone. That's the thymus. 
I do a lot of work with the thymus. The thymus is what makes and converts our mRNA. So when I use that word, I think everybody's going to know what I'm talking about. Bone marrow, spleen, tonsils, appendix, Peyer's patch in the small intestines, as well as a network of lip nodes connected by the lip vessels. The system transport lymph through the body. So a lot of times, if you look underneath these arms in this area, un underneath the right arm and the left arm, they'll say how many lymph nodes that we have to take out if a person was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, other areas of the body where the lymph nodes are would be the colon. The colon has a lot of lymph nodes. And if they have to remove a colon, they will test the lip nodes and decide how many inches of the colon is going to be removed. <clears throat> Did you know your lymphatic system, <coughs> excuse me, did you know your lymphatic system acts like your body's garbage collector? So think about this. In our area, it's kind of hilarious because you can't make this stuff up when you go to teach and you end up seeing that they're having a huge controversy about the garbage. But in our parish, uh, we're in Louisiana, so we have parishes rather than county. I live in the city limits, so I don't have this issue, but it is hilarious about you know, they didn't pick up my trash. And, and I sit back and I always think about, yep, if you don't get your trash picked up for a month, you have a big issue going on. It's not the most glamorous job, but certainly one of the most necessary. It's responsible for filtering. So think about your lawnmower, your core. It has a lot of filters for the gas and the oil. And those filters are what is going to help, you know, to remove the waste byproduct from your cell's body. Um, you know, a lot of people don't even know, you know, they don't know a lot about the lymphatic system. And, you know, a lot of people are not alone because of the simple fact that we just, we rely on the medical doctors and MD to clean our lymphatic system for us. And that is when we come down with cancer. However, if I tell people, let's clean your lymphatic system, you know, today, because they can't see it and they can't touch it and they can't see it clogged because that's not the way in which that we test for preventative, you know, we don't realize the crucial role it is in our health and that this system is not given enough thought um, in our, I'm going to call it the lay community, because we really need to spend time on cleaning up that lymphatic system. So the lymphatic system works by moving a fluid containing infection fighting white blood cell through your body's network of cells tissues and organs. So right now I am healing a bone. So now we're talking about bone marrow from a hairline fracture. I went to the doctor yesterday. I'm at the two month mark and I really wanted to hear that I was hundred percent healed and everything was good. However, I'm only at 60%. So you see, we can't see that bone marrow rebuilding and restoring and doing all that it's doing right now. But he told me, he says, you're, you're on the healing end. People at this point, never go back. He says, you know, you're exactly where you need to be. I don't tell people that, you know, you're not, if you were six years old, you'd probably be a hundred percent, but I, you know, as we get older and going through menopause, it's going to slow down the healing process somewhat. So that's where the, you know, the body of network of cells that our eyes don't see, but underneath a microscope, we could see it through the, um, the tissue. So the tissue got damaged when I had a, you know, sprain or pull. And then the organ is actually the bone, which is something that so few of us think of that we have to be taking care of. So the limb also contains a protein 
minerals, nutrients, and other substances which the body needs to be healthy. So we can't be without minerals. We can't be without vitamins in our body because this is what feeds and nourishes the cells and the tissue. This is amazing fluid keeps the good stuff flowing while carrying away the bad, such as damaged cells, cancer cells, bacteria, and viruses. So in the previous video, we went into that the five channels of elimination of how we remove this waste byproduct that we are talking about right now. When the lymphatic system is congested, this is a warning sign, the autoimmune issues come knocking. So it's such as chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, lupus, cancer, the whole gamut of different ways in which that, you know, it shows up and it's all part of the lymphatic system. So our organ, the bean-shaped organ known as the lip node, so they call it a bean shape because you know how we associate um, a food in nature that always goes back like the walnut gland looks like the uh, brain and we always go back to a food looks like something. Well, it's bean shaped on our lip nodes. Operating filter for the lip fluids. So the lip node is the filter. Some lymph nodes are situated underneath the skin in areas such as the neck, our armpits, or, and our groin area. We have a lot in the groin area and in the uh, armpits. These can be easily felt with your fingers, particularly when you are swollen. I often have some people that will have a gland underneath the neck or we will have something in the thyroid. So when this becomes a Hashimoto's or a goiter, because this is all glands, it's part of the lymphatic system. Your lymphatic system has been congested for a long period of time. And when it starts showing up here, you're probably looking at anywhere from five to 10 years that this has been accumulating. These can be easily felt with the fingers, particularly when they are swollen. These are located deeper inside the body, for example, in the abdomen, the pelvis, and the chest. So congested lymphatic system, what are the warning signs? If you are having cysts, cysts on the ovaries, cysts on, in the uh, on our back, if we're having a ganglion cyst, if we're having, um, where else? I'm trying to, cysts in the uterus lining, because that is where a lot of people will get cysts also usually associated in the breasts, on the female body. In men, it will come up more as a ganglion cyst or um, in the prostate area, and that's where all our lip nodes are. Asthma, allergies, bronchitis, emphysema, inflammation, water retention. Water retention is a congested limp. Boint, a bone and joint pain, prostate or uterine issues. These are just to name a few. There is lots and lots. And so what happens if parasites are present. So when we're going to have the parasites, so let's think of the parasites as candida, the vaginal itching, when we have more of fungus on the toenails, fungus on the um, skin. So if we're having something that is flaky on the skin, that's going to go back to fungus. Anemia is when we're going to not be rebuilding those white blood cells and we don't have enough iron. We either have too little or too much. Abdominal pain. A lot of people will talk to me about abdominal pain. And the number one thing I will say is, have you used the tennis ball in that area? Did you skin brush? What did you do to move your lymphatic system to get that moving? If all you're doing is 
bending forward, you are pressing lymphatic system just like in a yoga pose. So think about you, you know, doing the bend forward. So one of the beautiful things about a sun salutation with yoga in the morning is you wake up and move lymphatics or the skin brushing. Intestinal gases is a sign that there's parasites because the parasites go back to the um, uh, bacteria, skin rashes, rectinal issues. These are just, you know, some of the many, many ways in which that it can show up. So here we are with the move limp through breathing and movement. One of my big, big ways in which when I start working with people is I turn around and ask, are you doing deep breathing meditations? So in the part where I, you know, middle-aged women or as you get to a certain age, it's not like a lot of people can do a lot of the exercises that you're doing in your 20s or 30s or even, you know, the 40s. I'm not saying people in their 50s and 60s aren't doing this, but if they've had any type of, um, you know, knees hurt, the back surgeries, you're not going to be able to give them the type of movement if you're working with ALS or people who are sedentary in a bed, you have to be able to give lots of suggestions. That's where the meditation and the breathing comes in because this will move lymphatics. The breath and the breathing will move lymphatics. Do 15 minutes of deep breathing and you will see a major difference in your life. I have seen it in the last six months of really being conscious of incorporating that. Movement looks different for everybody. So the lymphatic system does not have a pump. The heart with the blood has the pump and it can pump it in and out. The lymph moves primarily by muscular movement and deep breathing. When we are inactive for long periods of time, lymph pools in the tissue spaces, making us feel sluggish and sore. So the more we don't move, the more we're going to feel chronic fatigue and tired. Most of my chronic fatigue people, I start them off with the deep breathing so they can start getting energy in order to at least start moving. Moving around and stretching and rubbing sore areas makes us feel much better because it pumps the stagnant fluid out of the tissue spaces and helping to bring in the fresh limb laden with oxygen and nutrients. So we want to bring in the oxygen, we want to bring in something fresh and we wanna bring in something new. So good health begins at the cellular level. This is the area in which that God has gifted me with a visual into our cellular body. And in order to work with this clean, nourish, feed, this is not what, if we're going to go to a MD, this is not what they're going to specialize in, in the prevention in this area. Cleaning your congested lymphatic system and ridding the body of parasites always help to rebuild, revitalize, rejuvenate your cells in in several core body systems. So the body systems, we break it down. Some people even go into 12 body systems. I usually go into nine body systems. In traditional naturopath, we always break down the body systems and we talk about that from uh, we talk about the body from that standpoint. Where is your weakest system and how can we feed and nourish that system? Suggestions for rebuilding, revitalizing, and rejuvenating. You can accomplish this by getting more fiber, creating movement, deep breathing, sleep, reduce stress, and skin brushing. These are the six highest, you know, uh, scientifically written about in order for us to move 
lymphatics, to move lymph. Most of the times we are working with people who have issues going on and it's not like they're going to be able to accomplish this just by exercise. It's not about, oh, if you just get more exercise, if you just get more exercise, because most exercise creates stress on the body. And if the person isn't sleeping and rebuilding and rejuvenating, they will not get the results that they're looking for. And they actually put the lymphatic system into a uh, you know, more, I, more, I call it more bogged down because if we aren't having enough fiber, we're not pushing out the trash. So the trash or the toxins would be called bacteria, viruses, the uh, cancer cells, the cells that have to break down. And these need to be brought out of the body and made new ones by the spleen. So let's help you decongest your lymphatic system today. All righty. So this is the presentation that goes towards the lymphatic system. What I have, let me get the other screening. So what product goes with this is the, there we go, here we go. So it's the all cell nutrition pack. That's how it would be listed in the back office of Soul Naturals. The back office um, will have it listed as all cell nutrition. So Lydia turn around and spoke about this is her also phase three part of her package on the lymphatic and the parasite. The lymphatic system. So right, what I did right here was I just went back from that PowerPoint presentation and rewrote the wording. So the lymphatic system is the complementary system to the circulatory system. It removes fluids from the spaces around the cells, transports it back to the circulate circulatory system. It is an important part of our immune system. So when we go into the congested system, here you are, the same wording that was in the PowerPoint presentation. Here's the healthy tips. Start your day with a warm water and lemon. Practice daily prayer and gratitude, which we have been doing for the last year and a half. Practice 10, 10, 10 breathing. So I teach this technique. What it is, is 10 breaths in through the nose. We hold from the lower abdominal for 10, and then we release via the nose 10 breaths. Why we don't use the mouth is so that way we put that lymphatic system um, through a challenge of removing toxins via the air passageway. So each night skin brush or in the morning, if you're a morning bather, and then practice meditation. So this was just the little healthy tips that I put. And then the guidelines. So the way in which that I, there is a, a sheet in the back office that's attached to the all cell nutrition package. However, in working with autoimmune system compromised people, I have done it a little bit different. In the morning, we do the Omitox DC, anywhere from one to three capsules. We work gradually in increasing a person to three capsules. We may only get to one with some people because the lymphatic system is extremely congested. We do do the scoop and a half of good vibrations. If you have used the good tracks before, you'll be well prepared to increase to the scoop and a half. The soul clear is three capsules in the morning. We will drink our, um, our soul vital in the morning. I mean, I'm sorry, cinemate in the morning. That's our warm drink that helps the digestive system. It helps balance blood sugar and it helps to get us, um, how you say that, positive and energetic. It's in our lift category. And then the soul vital in our balance category. If we look at that and drink our soul vital, sometimes 
people will add it to their fiber in the morning. When you add it to the fiber, what's happening is you're giving a concentrated dose of vitamins, minerals, and electrolytes for that bloodstream to be able to get all those nutrients that it needs. It can be drank separately. However, sometimes we have to mix it because of the person we're dealing with. They, if they're um, with a peg tube, they only take two feedings per day. So that's why we try to mix things together. And then here you're gonna bring in your ProBio at night. You're gonna take your two capsules. And then the fast track is going to be anywhere from one to three capsules. What we're working on to accomplish is to get the body to have the three bowel movements a day. Some people say, I'll go to the bathroom three times in the morning. That's fine. But we want to be able to bring in those three bowel movements. So when you, um, if you are interested and wanted to read let me see where I'm at here. Yeah, let me come to this presentation here. So on here, I have the article is let go, let it flow. And this is the tips for the healthy lymphatic system. And the pretty much the presentation is taken from this first part of the article that I wrote on the lymphatic system. So what we did was we knew what our what phases we wanted to create. I wrote the articles, the articles became the presentations. Symptoms of the sluggish lymphatic system. So this is some of the items that I'll have right here that I'll, you know, for space and time, uh, it wasn't all be, being able to put in the presentation, but here is things that when somebody's going to be, so this is for you to hear when a client is telling you, I have headaches or brain fog. I have a mucus buildup. My ears are popping or ringing, ringing ears, clean up the lymphatic system, uh, frequent colds, flu or sore throat, constipation, sluggish or bowels, inability to lose weight soreness and stiffness in the morning, you get the lymphatic system moving and you're going to make a person so happy when they put their feet on that floor, they will not be swollen and stiff and hardly can walk in the morning, bloating, swelling and heaviness in the extremities. So that's going to mean the hands, the feet, the head, Acne, dry skin, or skin issues is a lymphatic system. That means anything that has a pus, a boil, that's going to be accumulation of white blood cells. And then here we go again in the ways in which that you could be recommending to your clients. It's movement, dry skin brushing, massage, hydration, go over their foods, the stress, and then, all, you know, and you're doing this through a natural health, comp, uh, a natural health consultation. And that's how you get that lymphatic system moving. Um, I do have the article for the parasite on, let me see, let me go back one. And we can cover that one next week. I'll, I'll check with you to see if that's the way. And what I'll do, because the lymphatic and parasite go hand in hand. So what I did was I wrote the article for the parasite next in order to match. And here we would go over the parasites. And then I also have it in my services. The reason I have it in my services is because of the simple fact that if we're going to recommend, and this is becoming more and more prevalent. So I don't call it um, what most people will call what's going on today that we've been dealing with in 2020 and 2021 with the lymphatic system. Um, let me see, I have a chat. Do you immediately do this after phase two or do you have, do you know if they are ready in phase three? Okay, so Tiffany, I'll finish this and then I'm gonna answer the question. So right here, what I do is I break down and I'm able to tell a client what is a parasite and how it comes in. So this I'll cover so that way we'll have time for Q&A today. I'm gonna to stop sharing my screen so that way, 
okay so tiffany now i can see the chat sorry about that guys i had too many screens open so i personally when i am working with a client especially with autoimmune. So Tiffany, I know you're coming from that standpoint. The way you're going to know if they're ready or you need to start off really mild for three days. That's what I do. And then on the fourth day, if they're not complaining, because by the fourth day, they will be complaining to you. You need to check in with them on that fourth day. So I make sure their bowels are moving. I make sure they are not having a sinus issue. If they're having a sinus issue, stop cleansing. Get that cleaned up, get that mucus cleaned up and, you know, increase the soul clear um, and then bring in, you know, the gradual part. So most of the time with autoimmune, it will take me six months to get to phase three. That is me personally, when, because I am very cautious because I want to keep people living a life. I want to keep people enjoying their life and I want to keep them from complaining. If you go too fast, you're going, they're going to run to the medical doctor, perhaps they're going to run and they're going to look for answers outside of what you're doing. And they're going to say this program didn't work. That's what I normally see. So, um, do you ever keep them on phase two longer than 30 days? I have one lady that has been on phase two for probably close to eight months now. And we do add an Omitox. However, the minute I add the Soul Clear, her joints start hurting more. And she just, she's already, now she has, she's a registered nurse who does not want to do the medical community at all. She's been there, done that. She is done. She's older. Um, she, so what we do is when we keep her on phase two and we only add Omitox for like 30 days and then she'll get off of it and then she'll bring Omitox back in. But the minute we uh, uh, do the soul clear, she she is unable, she's sedentary. Well, I say sedentary. She does get up. She does drive a little bit. She has a walker, but she has some type of lymphatic diagnosis the word is this long i have no clue how to pronounce it so i'm not even going to try however you know when you're looking at ms when you're looking at what she has she is doing the best out of all of my clients because of the simple fact that she absolutely refuses to take the medications and different things like that and it's at what i see is she's not weakening and she wants to live on her own as long as she can. That's her goal. So know your client's goal. What is their goal? Because some of them come to me and they're like, oh, no, I want to cleanse. I want to cleanse. I want to cleanse. And the minute you cleanse them, they don't like the result that came along. I've always been taught to build first. A lot of people who cleanse do not take their multivitamins. They do not take minerals. They do not. And if you're not taking those, you will not get the good results that you're going to look for. Yeah. If they're not consistent, those that are not consistent. Don't make me drink this. It's my favorite. Yes. Um, so what if they've been on Bella for a while? They're still not eliminating, not a fast track, still just feeling crappy. You just need to keep on with it. Cause I have a, I have one that's about ready to throw in the towel. <laughs> so I would go back to is she, 100% meditating and deep breathing. Is she skin brushing? Is she doing <clears throat> what, what movement is she doing to move the lymphatic system? It sounds to me that there's a lot of stagnation. And then the next thing I'm going to go back to is, is she's emotionally eating. You need to get down to the root of helping support that emotional body. So, you know, <clears throat> recently i love when i come across this information and you know i know i need to give a talk and i always say this i said you know god is so good he just gives you everything you need and we have we've always known you know we have our 
our physical body, our spiritual body, our physical body, our mental, our emotional. We also have our um, eccentric body. And the part of that is going to go back to the mindset. The eccentric is going to go back to how are we showing up? So you need to study how she's showing up more and help culture to shift in that area. Does that help or do I need to elaborate on that a little more? Okay. Any other questions? I'll stop the recording.